Hey guys, in the spirit of Halloween, I thought how fun would it be to go and tell five of my top spookiest real estate stories. So I'll start with my first one and it's going to go in order from creepiest or spookiest um, from one to five. So here we go. The first, I'd say gross more than spooky, was a short sale listing that I got. And another, another agent in Kailua referred it to me and I was only my first or second year in the business. So I was just super hungry to have a listing. And in Hawaii, I think it was like under 200,000, which on Oahu is unheard of. Uh, I worked on that short sale for over 12 months. I think it was 18 months actually. When the tenants moved out, the tenants were living amongst thousands of cockroaches. And I was just on a virtual Zoom meetup and someone had a similar story and I thought, oh yeah, I experienced something very similar. Now cockroaches in Hawaii are common, as we know. This was not a normal amount of cockroaches. This was opening the cupboards and they're just sprawling all over the place. This is them crawling out of the stove, they're just in the sheets, they're all, oh, ugh. Yeah. Um, so the tenant finally moved out and I was getting to the closing table. I went in there just to take a quick glimpse, make sure everything was okay. And I'll never forget, I opened the door to this place and I closed it behind me. And it was like the, you know those Halloween movies where like bugs just crawl all over the door and then spread out? Thousands, thousands of cockroaches after I bombed the place had co collected around the door and the door jam. And when I opened it, they just dispersed all across the walls, all down the hallways to all the neighbors in this condo. Oh God, it was so gross, it was so gross. And I don't get grossed out that easy, but this was, it was over the top. So my second was, uh, there was a listing inquiry that I had in, a, in Honolulu and I called the guy to confirm he didn't answer. So at 10 o'clock at our appointment, I had gotten to my next one, which was an investor. Ironically, I work with investors. This investor would be the perfect person to come with me to the listing to see what he would offer on the house. So I could kind of give him a real time value as well. So it worked out well. I said, come with me. So we grabbed the guy some coffee and croissants and we drive up there. I get to the house and he says, make sure you bring your sneakers. I had slippers in the car, so I thought, that would be fine. Where? So he answers the phone. He goes, drive all the way up to the top of the hill. Now, mind you, this is like a 75%. I, I don't actually know, but it was a steep hill. It was an, a, a steep incline. And so I had to start my car, back it up, and then go up the hill, and then cut really sharp into someone's driveway, and my car was kind of tilted, so it was hard to get in and out of it. Then. There's two broken down abandoned houses up at the top and I just, there's no way a car can get up there. There's a rope tied to a tree up to a busted down truck that's sitting on the metal all rusted away and it's a rope to help you get up there because there's all these pine needles making it really slippery and the concrete has deep grooves so you have to walk sideways and backwards so you don't fall or use the rope that's attached to the you know, rusted up truck at the top that I'm just afraid is going to slide down because I have that luck. So I get it to the top and to the right is an abandoned house that you can only get to by bridge, which is gone. And then the house, that was left. And then the house to the right, which had all missing windows and there was just no way anyone could live in there. I see this another rope. And so my partner was like, I'm not going up there. There is no way, uh-uh, back to the car. I was like, you can't leave me alone. I'm way too curious at this point. So we call his name, call his name. He doesn't answer. He's not answering his phone anymore. I'm like, oh, this is a trap and I see another rope behind the busted vehicle and you have to squeeze between these two things and get to the next rope and use it to get to the next spot. And yeah, there's no pathway into that abandoned house, but there is a pathway to the left going literally into the woods. There is no other access to this besides hiking. And so we did it in my professional clothes. Mind you, he asked me to pick up his mail at the end of the driveway and it was an oversized mailbox with packages and mail, so I'm also like calling his mail. And get up there calling his name, and he, in the creepiest voice, 
you hear, I want me here. And he sounded kind of sick on the phone too. Like, but he didn't sound that raspy and creepy. So we get up there and lo and behold, in the middle of the woods is this weird three-story house on the cliffside. But the way they built it, there was no windows or doors facing you when you walked to it. And then all of a sudden, this black door on the rear side, so you can only see it when it swings open, creaks and slides open. And he said, come inside. And that weird, creepy voice. And I said, absolutely not. Why are you whispering weird and not coming out? And he said, I'm disabled. And I think he was. I don't think his legs worked or something, but how does he get up and down? Because I know he does. He said he does. And he gets up and down there a couple times a year. There's just no way. I am a fit young individual and I had a tough time. So I dropped the mail and the food and I ran out of there and I ran with my partner. May or not, he did not move fast enough. So he will claim that I nudged him out of the way and he slid to a scary uh, cliffside death, but that is not true. That didn't happen. That brings me to my third creepy, scary real estate moment. I was showing a client a home on a, the other side of the island. And when I get there, there was a lady outside and she was smoking a cigarette at this table. And it's common here to hang out in your carports and outside. And she only had three teeth and she looked a little unmanaged and tamed. So she lets us inside with no warning. As we're walking through the house, we hear moaning. And we follow the moaning sound into this bedroom. And there's this guy laying on a mattress that's on the ground, blind. He's got white eyes and he's staring up at the ceiling and he's moaning, I'm hungry, food. And there was grimy black marks all across the wall at his like level with the mattress on the, the ground. There was no sheets on the bed and it was soiled. There was only like a sheet over him, but not completely over him, just kind of. And his toenails and his nails were like really yellow and hadn't been cut in years. And there was one end table, but it was like in the middle of the room where he couldn't reach it. And he clearly was disabled. He clearly was blind and hungry, malnourished. And I walk outside to go ask the lady, um, there's a man in your bedroom moaning help and that he's hungry? And she's like, oh yeah, just ignore him. He just ate this morning, he's fine. He's always saying that. I was like, can I get him some more food? Maybe, I mean, he does look like he might be hungry. She's like, no, he's fine. That's all he knows how to say. His brain doesn't, you know, that's fine. So I go and I just peek in the rice cooker and it's completely bone dry and it looks like it hasn't been used in a while. I just peek in the fridge, or, you know, inspecting the house to purchase for my client and there was only ketchup packets and a bottle of shoyu in the fridge. And so the cabinets also had no food. So it's very possible this man has not eaten in a while. I don't know what she's eating, but um, ended up we, I had to contact the listing agent and I was like, that is, that's crazy. I go outside to the lady and I said, who is that by the way? She goes, oh, that's my husband. I was like, oh, what happened? Oh, he did something at work and then it affected his brain and then he went blind and yeah, I mean, now he's just useless. I wish he would just die already. Okay, social services, whoever needs to go in there and help, I don't even know, but the dog, I got the dog out of there and found the dog a new home and I'm not sure what happened with the rest I not my client to follow up with so my fourth scary story my first year in real estate I was very naive and young I had no mentorship I had no broker to really leverage or talk to and I was kind of isolated in a very country side of the island of Oahu and there was a guy who I had an oceanfront listing. That's a story in itself, how I even got that as a new young agent. But there was a guy who inquired to buy it. He said he wanted to rent it if possible because he's building this custom log cabin in Pupukea in honor of his wife who passed away giving birth to his children. 
So like any luxury or any higher end seller, he was more mysterious, but he kept scheduling times to meet up, go scuba diving, rent boats. This gentleman even said that he was a fisherman and he wanted to open up a restaurant on the North Shore. And I am one or two years into the business. I'm only 21, maybe 22. I have no idea what I'm doing and I have no network yet. And I'm in, sitting down with the Haliva Plaza 2 commercial realtors who, there's three of them and there was one of me on the other side of the table and he was a no-show. So stuff like that occurred. And he had all of these promises, but he just kept saying the right things to keep me hooked. And then uh, there was a realtor who knew me and he just called to check in. And I told him what was going on, that I had this buyer. And he goes, Ashley, I don't think that's a real client. And I go, you've got to be kidding me. There's, of course he is. Why, why would anyone lie about that? So when the guy called me and asked for something, I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not home. And he goes, what do you mean? I see your car. He was a stalker. He was stalking my house. I had to move, long story short, crazy. Come to find out, he is a meth addict. Um, and he has done that before. My fifth and final spooky Halloween real estate story. Uh, same buyer as the other house with the gentleman that was in the bed, ironically, an investor. We were scheduled to look at a property and I, he's always really early and I go to meet him and he calls me up on the phone. He goes, Ashley, don't come. Just turn around. And I said, why? I'm almost there. And he goes, there's a dead guy in the carport. My client showed up to our showing and there was a dead guy in the carport who passed away that evening on a mattress. And he was not technically a squatter on the property. He wasn't an owner, he wasn't a tenant. It was an, it was an empty house, but he had gone by the property and whatever he got into or whatever happened, he decided to take a nap uh, underneath the house and passed away. So, that probably scarred, scarred my client for life. So that's all I have for you. Well, I have a whole bunch more, but we'll get into that another Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Aloha.